uh, Second Peter tonight, if you have Bibles, chapter 3. <clears throat> this mic is on. I can put another mic on. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Second Peter, uh, chapter 3. Verse 18. Before, while you're turning there, you don't have to turn to this verse. I just want to read to you. First John 4 1 says, Beloved, <clears throat> believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. All throughout, uh, the, it's in the Old Testament, but I'm focusing on the New Testament tonight. All throughout the New Testament, <clears throat> there is warning to us against uh, false teaching about the Bible. We see it in Jude, we see it in Revelation, we see it in 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st Thessalonians, Hebrews, Romans, um, the Gospels, Jesus himself spoke about uh, false uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, beware of them, beware of false teaching constantly being warned against false teaching and <clears throat> um, you know the spirit of antichrist it said is in first thessalonians is that is in the world now which was then two thousand years ago and is coming as we know in the end times but this it seems like <clears throat> there there are times when it creeps up even more so and, and it, to me it seems like lately there is a lot of false teaching going on in, in the inter on the internet. Uh, different people expressing different viewpoints about different things. And some of them are valid, some of them are foolish, some of them seem right, and, and some of them are, are, are there to deceive. And this is what it says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God or not. Uh, so when you come across these things on the internet, like a lot of people will say, uh, they'll say something and they'll just say, well, <clears throat> where did you hear that? It was on the internet. And they, they think if it's on the internet, it's true. It's like, you know, like if they hear something on the news, it's true. No, not necessarily. Try the Spirit. Uh, what is it saying? Is it in the Bible? Does the Bible support it? Uh, is it the truth? Is it the mind of God? Is it relevant to what God wants us to be knowing about and learning about? Um, there's a verse that tells us to be wise concerning that which is good and ignorant concerning that which is evil, okay? And evil can take on many forms. Evil can be like, okay, I can see this horrific thing that's evil, but evil can come as an angel of light and be evil. Evil can take on the form of light even within inside of us, but it's darkness. Uh, so if the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness, the Bible says. So, we have this uh, warning all throughout the, the scriptures um, against uh, false teaching, false prophets, spirit of Antichrist, different spirits that are in the world. And as a pastor, I feel it's net my duty uh, and to warn us occasionally from time to time when these things start creeping up. Because there's a lot of debate going on lately about foolish things. And, and and then they're, they're, you can get, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them per se. They're okay to debate, but if they can get you lost in, in what God really wants us to focus on. They can get you going down paths and rabbit holes that, that we're not supposed to go down. It's not like, because they're not important to what really is important, okay? Second Peter 3.18. 
this is what I think is important for us. Always has been and always will be. It is what God has called us to do. And it's this, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want, uh, you know, if you're listening or if you're here, I, think, I want you to think about uh, how long you've known God. Some of us longer than others, whatever. Uh, I think everybody here has been a fairly long time. I mean, Asia's not that old, so we can't <laughs> But I've known her since she was a little kid, and she's been here in the scriptures, so we'll, we'll give you credit. <laughs> yeah. Even though you're only what? How old? I was 18. 18. Wow. That's, that's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But think about how long you've known God, and then the first time you heard about grace, like, what was your, your what, did, what was your, mindset about grace. Uh, I mean, I remember me and my wife, who wasn't my wife then, we got saved together at a Bible study. And the message of grace and love was, uh, and they go together by the way, you cannot have grace, true grace, apart from love, because that is, grace is an aspect of God's love. It's, a, it's an attribute of it. So, uh, I, hearing about his love and the, the message at the end was, if you want to know for sure that you can go to heaven when you die, then receive Christ. You know, say this prayer. Like, I was like, and when they asked for hands, I was like, oh, yes, yes. That, that, you know, something clicked. But it, it was only because, and this was grace from God, to save me is that I was selfish about it and I wanted to go to heaven when I died because I was told in the religious, you know, by false prophets and false teachers that there's no, no chance of you going to heaven. Which in a sense was true, no chance without Christ, but, but they never taught the gospel. They just said, oh no, you've done so much wrong, you could never do enough right, blah, blah, blah. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, that, that was my first introduction to grace. You, you, you know, a basic grace from God. What is grace? It's unmerited favor. It's favor. God's favor upon us. And God did the work at Calvary. We learned later that he came. Why could I go to heaven by saying a prayer? Because Christ paid for my sins, which were keeping me from going to heaven. And he paid for them. And, and so I, if I would receive that gift, I would have eternal life, I could go to heaven. That's all I knew. That's all I wanted to hear, that I grabbed it. I knew nothing else. I was a babe in Christ, you know, like a baby, like a newborn babe. All I could think was a little bit of milk, and that was, a, that was so good and nourishing. Uh, then, as, as we went along, uh, there, we learned about what grace was, you know, we didn't really know what it was, but then we learned about it. Uh, we learned, uh, we didn't even know what it meant to grow in grace, but we were starting to grow in grace. And, and God, through his patience and his gentleness with all of us, not just with me or my wife, but with all of us, this is how he operates. He feeds us and he nourishes us. We see how kids grow. You know, uh, you know, I hate to keep picking on Deja, cause, you know, but I've seen her grow. We've seen her grow. Uh, Nick, you know, Heather's kids, Nick and Ryan, I remember them running around. That little, now that he's, you know, a young man and Ryan's a young man. Ryan's 18, right? Yeah, he'll be yeah. 19 yeah. in two weeks. Uh, so we see kids grow and then we see those kids having kids and they're in Sunday school and we used to teach their, their, them in Sunday school and way back when. And, and the process of physical growth is something that we can all witness, but then the process of growing in grace and knowledge is something that we, we have been um, going through since the moment we got saved. 
since God, the moment God called us into his kingdom. And, the, and he has been feeding us a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And not the same amount uh, all the same time, uh, but as according to our capacities and according to our, uh, the faith that we have, God can feed us a, a, a little bit or a lot at different times. But we're learning, growing means to increase, uh, to enlarge. Not, not physically, hopefully, but to enlarge our, our capacity for knowledge for Him. But in order for me to have knowledge of Christ, I need grace. I need to have grace. You know, I remember what Pastor Shabelli said about those two things, that um, grace without knowledge is lasciviousness, and knowledge without grace is legalism. So, <clears throat> you know, uh, when it comes to Christ, when it comes to our, our belief system, I, if, I can, if I knew Christ only after knowledge in my head, I would condemn myself because he's too holy for me. He's too right for me. I can't fellowship with that. I need grace in order to approach Christ, in order to know him personally uh, and to have a relationship with him. Uh, if I didn't, if I just knew grace, unmerited favor, and I didn't have the knowledge of my sin nature, and the knowledge of redemption, and the knowledge of what happened at Calvary, then I would use that grace to, grace to do whatever I want and say, well, there's grace, and there's grace. And that's what we hear among some of these false teachings in the world today, that, you, well, it doesn't matter what you do, there's grace. And in one sense, that's true. Uh, there is grace for my sin, where sin abounds, in Romans 5.19, grace does much more abound, okay? But that doesn't mean that, that grace is there so that I can live in lasciviousness. It means that grace is, grace is more abounding than my sin because it's greater than my sin. It has the power and ability to do what my sin could not do. Or, or what my sin thought it could do. Sin has a great power to it. We all could admit that, right? I, like, how many times have you said, I'm not going to do that anymore? And then you did it five minutes later, or the next day. I'm not going to swear anymore. And then, you, like, somebody just looks at you wrong and you're swearing again. You know, we, we try to stop sinning with knowledge. We know it's wrong. My knowledge says it's wrong. Don't do that anymore. Okay, I'm not going to do it anymore. And then we find ourselves doing it, and then we're in the same boat as Paul in Romans 7, saying, I, I, the things I don't want to do, I find myself doing. The things that I want to do for God, I can't seem to do. I'm a wretched man, yes, and that's the knowledge. But when he uh, continued in Romans, I think it's 7.29, he said, Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God for Jesus Christ, my Lord. So he came to the conclusion uh, that he had a sin nature, but because of Christ, he could not live in condemnation in Romans 8, 1. There was no condemnation when you're in Christ. Why? Because he paid for my sin. So it leaves me with, in, with this groaning in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've come to a place in our walk, uh, or if you haven't, you will, uh, and if, if you, uh, the place you are at in your life with grace now might be further along than, uh, like I want to read this verse to you. Hebrews 6, 1, uh, says this, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. This is a loaded verse. This is a, this is a loaded verse. And, and it's not saying that we should forsake Christ at all, but it's saying that leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. What are the principles of the doctrines of Christ? The doctrine of Christ, right? Christ came to, to, to die for my sin 
and whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm saved. I got saved 40, how many years ago? Yeah. 76. 76. 48 years ago. Wow. I, you know, yeah. I've been saved 48 years ago, and some people are like, you're kidding me. You don't seem like you've been saved for that long ago. No, I don't sometimes, but, but where was I going with that thought? Okay, I learned 48 years ago that if I received Christ, I would go to heaven. Do I still need to learn that today? No. That's a principle of the doctrine of Christ. He came to the earth and died for my sin, and I've been saved, and I'm going to heaven when I die. I believe this. This is faith. I believe it. I'm settled. It's settled in my heart. It's a principle of the basic doctrine of Christ. I don't need to hear it every day. I don't need to rehearse it every day. I know that I'm saved, that I'm going to heaven. I believe this. This is what faith is. This is what faith is called. It's the knowledge of Christ with grace. Like, I don't deserve it, but God gave it to me, so therefore, I'm going to act on it. And, and I'm not going to say, next week, well, I was really bad, I wonder if I'm saved. Or, I've been bad for a while now, I wonder if I'm saved. Did you say the prayer and mean it when you said it? Did you want to go to heaven? Did you receive Christ? Even with the very basic rudiments of grace, the little bit of milk, that was thrown you away, do you want to? Yes, I do. God said, that's enough for me. I'm going to feed you with that milk now, and then I'm going to turn it into meat later on. The, the rudiments of grace. Leaving that principle, why? Because we're growing, that's why. If we stay on the principle of salvation, and we're always like wondering if we're saved, Wondering if we lost it, wondering if God loves me, wondering if God's mad at me, wondering uh, if God even hears me anymore because I've been bad. That's a principle that, 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 that we need to leave. Like put it, not forget about it, but leave it behind. It's settled. Let's go on to the next area of grace that God wants us to know about, which is the next area for a lot of us is no understanding sanctification justification, all of the vacations in the Bible. <laughs> Understanding positional truth. Okay? God, I've, God has saved me, I'm going to heaven, but what now? Oh, there's a life here on earth. He wants you to live. He wants you to live for Him. He has new life for you. It's not the life where everybody's living on this earth. It's, it's, he's going to, going to put His power inside of you and give you grace to live. Grace to live life differently than everyone else is living it. So, uh, it's, I don't have to strive with my behavior anymore. The Holy Spirit is going to lead me in that area and teach me the knowledge, grace and the knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord. Alright, so let's continue. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. It's not saying that God wants, expects us to live perfectly, because none of us are ever going to do that. But, it's, but we're going on to perfection, which means what? We're, we're headed towards a time when we will have a glorified body, when sin won't be anymore. The sin nature will be gone. It's, it's, the, it, it's when the rapture happens, when Christ comes back. And the word, let us go on to that, means to just follow that course that he's heading us, has, a, has, has us headed towards. Follow that course. It's, I can never be perfect unless Christ is in me. It's, it's he's, his perfection in me. It's not me. So, don't get hung up on that and say, oh, God wants me to be perfect and I'm not perfect. No, none of us are. So. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permit. And there again is a little trickiness of words. The meaning, well, God, does God permit it? Yes, God permits it. Okay, there are some things that God doesn't permit. But this is one thing that God does permit, all right, to go on in our walk, 
to go to the next step, to go to uh, uh, the next level of grace. And there is, I can't tell you how many levels of grace there are. It's, it's unlimited, the number and the depth of the grace of God. But there are levels and there are depths of it. All right? And so, here we are, we're saved, we have grace, we're sanctified, we're following God, we're going to church, not because we have to, because we want to. Right? We're praying because we want to, because we want to talk to God. Uh, we, uh, go, all these things aren't a chore for us, they're a joy for us now when we go to church. And this is the grace of God. And, it, and, and But then there comes this part of grace that God wants us all to know. And it's connected, like I said, to his love. All right? And, I, and, and um, let me read you this verse. It, it's, uh, this is a level of grace that we, we will all get to. And I can't tell you when you'll get to it because Christ is personal with each one of us. And maybe you got to it a long time ago. <clears throat> maybe you haven't gotten there yet. Or maybe you're there now. I don't know. Uh, but it's just a, it's a deeper part of grace. It's, it's growing in this grace. Because grace, I can't, we can't define the whole scope of grace and say, well, if I, if I study grace for four years, at the end of it, I'm going to graduate from grace. No, because grace, grace will be there in eternity. Grace is part of God. And, but, but I can limit the amount of grace I experience in my life by my own choosing. Uh, and at the same time, I can go further with grace uh, because God is willing to reveal more and more of his grace. It says uh, in James that he giveth more grace. He resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. You know, uh, Or as we say in, in the book of Acts, uh, when the disciples started uh, doing miracles that they couldn't do before, and having uh, shown signs and wonders uh, uh, and teaching and having thousands come to Christ, uh, it says great grace was upon them. Great grace. An amount of grace that was different than the saving grace. Right? It's great grace. And, and this is an area where God would have us enter into in our walk. Grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this level of grace. Here it is. Uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, through his poverty, might be rich. And then this is Philippians 2, 7 through 9, uh, where it says that Christ uh, emptied himself, humbled himself, and made himself of no reputation, and became obedient unto the death of the cross. You know, why? For the joy that was set before him. The joy, what joy? The joy of fellowshipping with us who would believe on him. He would die for us before we would even receive it or acknowledge it. Let's go back to this verse. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. I'm rich. Do you feel rich tonight? Not, not monetarily. No. <laughs> no. You know. No, I, I don't have $10 million in my bank account. No, I don't have a Mercedes out there in the yard. I, no, in that aspect, no. But am I rich tonight? Yes, I am. Because Christ became poor so that I could become rich. You know how rich you are tonight. The measure of your growth in grace, uh, uh, well, that answer is, determines that. Like, you're rich because of the grace of God. How rich? You, you have the riches of Christ that he gave up for you. He became poor, he gave up his riches and became poor so that we who were poor might become rich. Rich in what? In his grace. In his grace, which is how much? I don't know. The earth can't hold it. 
You know, my heart can't hold it. Eternity can't hold it. It's greater than all of that because it's God. All right? And so we are rich in this grace, but this grace is doing something in this verse, isn't it? It's, it's not just receiving now, it's giving. Mm -hmm. This is what growing in grace does, okay? God just gives us grace and gives us grace, and we can't believe it. And how many times have we said, I can't believe God gave me grace again. I blew it one more time. I can't believe He gave, still gave me grace. I don't know, it, you know, I think there's not a lot of times where we experience the grace of God from people in the world. Like, you have a, you know, I did this to my boys once, and think of, listen to what I'm saying. I, I, I remember doing this once with them, because like the Bible says, if you being evil know how to do good things to your kids, how much more shall your heavenly father do you? Like, our kids do something wrong, right? And very rarely do we say, forget about it. You know, you're good. And you go, you know. My kids, when my wife would say, wait till your father gets home, you know. Like, they would be acting up. I'd be at work, and she would just say, wait till your father gets home, you know. And so they knew when I came home, she was going to tell me what they did, so they would just hide. You know, like they would scamper upstairs, everything was silent all of a sudden, and I would come home, and hear me come up the stairs, you know, oh, dad's home, we're going to get it now. And my wife would be like, wait till you hear what your boys did, your boys did this thing, you know. Da, 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 da. Like, you know, the boys are upstairs, always waiting, they're like, boys! <laughs> you know? And then you have to do a lot of discipline because they did something wrong. But then sometimes they would do something wrong and they knew it. And I knew that they knew it. And, and I just would say, forget it. I'm not going to do anything. You know? And that's grace. And it's not letting people get away with murder. It's just giving people grace. They know they deserve punishment, but you give them grace. This is how God is with us, more than people are with us. That God gives us grace. We all know we deserve punishment, but he gives us grace. More grace, greater grace. And now he gives us this kind of grace where he gave up himself so that we could become rich. And now my, my question is for all of us tonight is, are we able to give this grace out? that he gave to us. We are, because he gave it to us. Because it's not our grace, it's his grace. Like, can I give the grace of God that he has given me out to somebody? And we're using the word grace tonight, but really we could say love, right? We could say, are you able to love people the way Christ loved you? Like, it's a command in the Bible. I want you to love one another even as I have loved you. And so we say, well, how did, it, how did Christ love me? He laid down his life for me. He gave up his riches for me and became poor. Like the life Christ lived on earth was one of poverty. But that's not the poor he's talking about. He gave up who he was, his reputation. He emptied himself of who he was, the son of God, the king of kings on the throne and became a man so that we could become citizens of heaven. It's amazing. And we have an opportunity to give that same grace to people. People who offend us, people who are jerks to us, people who, you know, treat us badly, people who are just there. And, and, and they don't know this grace, but we do. And imagine if somehow we could convey this grace to them because we're growing in this grace. This is part of the growth. We're constantly increasing and enlarging ourselves with this grace. And we're maybe at this place now where God is saying, you have so much grace in you. Or you have so much love in you. Can you stop pouring it out to people? Not in your own capacity, in the capacity that I have put into you all this time since you've been saved. The amount of grace deposited into you 
and been kept given to you and given to you, and now God might be saying for you, to, for me, to somebody, it, it's time for you to give this out to somebody. Not Again, not in your own strength, because you can't do it, but, in, but I can do it through you. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what it's like to get this grace now, so you can definitely know how to give it out to people. Like, what does that mean? It means, sometimes it means just letting things go. Like my boys, like, they deserved the punishment. They knew that I knew, they knew that mom knew, they knew all of that, but I just said, forget it. Like, wh what does that do for you? That, that's an amazing thing for someone to experience. If you've ever gotten away with something, not gotten away, but I mean, you, you knew you did something, like I did that with, a cop did that with me once, you know? I, I was caught speeding, and, and he had me, and I, I couldn't even make up a story. Like, like I just said, he goes, you know, you were, you know, you were clock, clock, you were doing this? I said, yeah, I, I know, I shouldn't have been doing that. I said, sorry. And he just gave me a warning, mm -hmm. let me go. I was like, oh, this is so great. I deserve the ticket, but he didn't give it to me, you know? And that's a little thing. And this, but not, now magnify that with the grace of God. Somebody offended you, somebody done wrong to you, and you go, I, I, I could hold this to, uh, to your account. I could, like, uh, make your life miserable. I could have, like, this war feel you, but I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I, but you know why? I, the only way I can do that is because I've grown in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a relationship with God that exceeds the problem that you have given me. And so I don't need to have you uh, say you're sorry. I don't need to have you make up for what you did. I don't need to have you do anything because I'm receiving my grace from God, my portion from God. And believe me, I'll go back to the beginning here. Believe not every spirit. Uh, believe not all these things that you're hearing. Like, like prove it out by the, it says prove it. And you prove it through doctrine. You prove it through the Word of God. Is it a true spirit? If it is, it will have this as its foundation. But if it has something else, like a works, you have to do works, or you have to do this, or you have to do that to be acceptable to God, and you have to, you know, it's not of God. God isn't about you have to do. God is about grace in love. And, he, and yes, you could take advantage of it. You can step on God with it. You can say, oh, God gave me grace. Oh, I can do whatever I want. Well, yeah, you can. Have fun with that. You know, but you're not really going to know God in that way. Because you, guess what? When, you, when you're saying I can do that, you're back to getting little drops of milk again. And the Bible says in Hebrews that... Uh, are you not yet carnal? Because of the time has come when you should be graduating from the milk and eating meat. But I still have to feed you with milk. But God saying, no. Like you're ready for the meat. You're growing in grace. But if I keep going back to, well, I'll use grace as a license or, uh, you know, all this stuff, then I'm back to drinking milk again. And God is saying, no, no, no. Like, let's leave that principle behind and, and develop this grace in us. And we'll close with this, like, what is the next level of grace for us? Like, where, where are we going with the grace of God? I don't know. God knows, though, because there's another level of grace that I don't know about. And that's amazing to me. I was thinking about it. I said, oh, I've been saved for 48 years. I've been a pastor for almost 30 years. And I'm like, I should know a lot about grace. I don't know anything like I ought to know it. Like, and I'm not saying that to disparage myself or anybody. I'm saying this is how immense the grace of God is. Like there's a part of the grace of God that I don't know about yet. Uh, he hasn't revealed it to me, or I haven't had the faith to believe in it or step into it yet. But it's there. It's there, and it's greater than my sin. That's what it, Romans 5.19 is talking about. It's greater than my uh, ability to believe in it. It's there. 
It's, and, and because God is there, because grace, the grace is part of God. So I can continue to grow in the grace, and God is always going to continue to be gentle with me in it, and patient with, and with me in it, but encourage me to take another step into it. Like we stand in the grace of God, when we fall, we fall into the mercy of God, we grow in the grace of God, there's great grace that enables us to do things that we could never do in our imagination or in our life, but because of the grace of God, we do it. The apostles never thought that they could heal people and bring them back from the dead. They never thought that they could speak to 5,000 people and have them get saved. They never thought that they could go into all the world. They were afraid hiding in a room after Christ's death. What brought them out of that? Grace. Grace. Peter denied the Lord three times. He's hiding. Imagine what he thought when, when the, the Mary came to the room and said, Oh, by the way, Peter, he said your name specifically. Go tell Peter that I'll see him later. Like Peter must have thought, oh boy, like my boys used to think. Dad's coming home. You know, imagine what he thought. Oh, I can't face him. I denied him three times. He is going to chew me out. He's going to probably cast me out of the twelve, I'll never, blah, 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 all that, you know, and then he cooked fish for him, mm -hmm. and he showed him grace, you know, it's amazing, the grace of God that he has given us, and there's another level of it that he will reveal to us as we keep growing in this grace, the thing we have to do is not allow the voices in the world to keep, to they're designed there to make us challenge and doubt God and to stop us from growing in grace. That's why the Bible says, prove these spirits. Prove what you're hearing. Don't believe everything you hear just because they put the name of God in there or Jesus in there or anything in there. Prove it. Is this the heart of God? You know, prove what I said tonight. Get the scripture out and say, is it, Pastor Jim, really grown in grace? Is there really greater grace? Is there really more grace? Yes, there is. As well as logistical grace and dying grace and sufficient grace. When, for when, when, when we can't deal with the, the ones in our flesh, God says, my grace is sufficient for you. Don't ask me to take it away. Imagine that. You have a thorn in your flesh. It bothers you. You ask God to take it away, and sometimes he says, no, deal with it, because my grace is sufficient for it. That, that's a level of grace that, that you don't get when you're it's getting drops of milk. That's a level of grace that's meaty, like sufficient grace, like this problem that I hate, this thing that is plaguing me, this thing that I think is from Satan, and it might be, or this thing that this sin that is hindering me, and I've asked God, take it away, please God, why won't you take it away? And God simply says, because my grace is sufficient for you. And we, if we, and we, and that's a part of grace that we need to learn. That we, because we think this, that if my sin is still there, then I'm not going to get grace from God. If my sin, if I don't do something about this, then God's not going to favor me. And God's saying, oh yes I am, because I understand your sin better than you do. Oh yes I am, because I died for that sin already. And if, you can, if you're struggling with, and, I, and I, I hate doing this, but you know, a disclaimer thing, if I'm not saying tonight that go ahead and send up a storm, because God says oh, my grace is sufficient for him, I'm saying it's a, Paul went to God three times. When he was in agony. He was begging him, take this away. He hated it. It wasn't like, oh God, please let me keep this in. I want to keep doing it. No, that's a mindset. It's something I want to get rid of and I can't seem to get victory over it. God help me. And God sometimes says, no, my grace is sufficient for you. Like, at that moment, he's, he's trying to teach us and cause us to grow in this area of grace where we say, okay, even though I have this problem, I'm still going to go forward in, with God and grow in Him because grace is more greater than my sin. It's greater than my weakness. It's greater than my thorn. It's sufficient for me in it. And, and, and I don't have to give up 
and, and, and get frustrated and quit and all of that stuff. I just go on with God in it. And when God's ready to take it away, He'll take it away. And if He doesn't, then grace is sufficient for Him. It's enough. Can you live with that? Yes. Paul, that's what Paul said. I will glory in that. I will glory in that. What a release that is. Like, I'm trying to get rid of this so I can serve you, God. And you're saying, no, you can serve me with it. You can still serve me with it. I, I accepted you. I, I saved you already. You're good with me. Just go on. Don't worry about it. And, and so, so uh, what's next for us? I don't know, but it's exciting. And, it's, it's, and I know when it comes, it's, it's without condemnation, and it's with the love of Christ, and it's, it's with gentleness and patience, and it's with a, a prodding of encouragement. God says, are you ready to take the next step? Are you ready to chew on some steak? Like, great, there's something more about grace you're going to learn. It's going to be amazing for your life. And I would, I'll close with this, believest thou this. Yes, amen. amen. Yeah. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we, uh, we're overwhelmed by your grace tonight, Lord, because all that we said about it, and we feel like we're, we're so inadequate to to speak about it, it's so amazing. The song Amazing Grace is, is says a lot, Lord, but grace even, who can describe this? It, it's just, uh, it leaves us speechless, Lord. But you told us to talk about it, you told us to, to think about it, you told us to meditate on it, Lord, and, and what a great subject to meditate upon, Lord. We hear all these things on the internet, in the world, there's things challenging who you are, what you made, how long this and this and the, all this foolishness, Lord. And we get so caught up in, in facts and figures and all that, yet forget totally about your grace, your knowledge of your Son, Lord, which is the most important thing in the Scripture, really, to know you, to know you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for your grace tonight. If anybody's watching and they don't know you as Savior, receive Christ in your heart. You said in the, in the message, and I call upon him, so I want to know you, Lord. I want to go to heaven when I die, but I want to know you. I want to have a relationship with you. That's all you have to do, is have a want to, a desire in your heart to know him. And that's all God's looking for. And he will come in, and you will have a relationship with him. And, and uh, Father, we pray if anyone said that tonight watching, you would just confirm in their heart. Let them know that they just, just did something that changed their life, Lord. And uh, thank you again for the amazing grace. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Okay. Thanks for joining us, Facebook and YouTube.